Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our September edition of the Caron Sage Mining User Group. Today, we're going to talk about how to control your mine maintenance expenditures. I'm Paul Caron. I'm the owner of, of Caron Business Solutions. Today, we have two speakers. Mathilde Tisi is from Demo Maint, and she is in the Toronto office. And Theophile Kerr is from Lyon, France, and he is the area sales manager for LATAM and Spain. And soon he will be located in Mexico City. So we're very happy to have those two speakers today. What the agenda is, is a little brief introduction uh, from me. And then we're going to have uh, the demo folks talk about their maintenance solution that integrates with Sage. And we'll have a product demonstration and then questions and answers after that. Okay, so just a little bit about Caron. We're built on four areas that support our value proposition. Number one is that we provide world-class software. And the software is, is written by Sage, which is an international company that has been providing ERP for many, many years. Also partners such as Demo that provide excellent software that integrates with Sage. The second pillar of our success is that we have staff that over 22 years have learned to be experts on this software. So we know the software very, very well and we can help our clients to implement it in their mining operations. But further than that, with mining, we need to have an international team. And basically our team is international. We are located in Vancouver, BC, and we also have an office in Peru where we provide services directly to the operating sides of mining companies in, in Spanish, of course. Now, the last thing is that we, we have to know about mining. We really can't be experts and support a mining solution unless we understand the mining industry. I've been involved in mining myself for 30 years. I was born and raised in a mining town and we have my great mining knowledge in our team. And th those four areas really are what make up Caron Mining Solutions powered by Sage. Really, in a summary, we are 100% focused on mining. We understand the mining industry. And further than that, we understand the value of mining in the world. We're going in a green economy. It's really hard to support a green economy without mines. You can't build electric cars without mines. So the value of mining into this our new economy our green economy is well understood by our firm and we support the growth of mining worldwide we are supported also by sage so we're not alone uh, you know it's, it's hard to provide international support to companies such as canadian mining companies without support from other parties and certainly in north america we are greatly supported by sage we have been for over 22 years in canada we also have a fantastic relationship with the Sage folks in Latam in, in Brazil. Further to that, we have connections with Sage International. X3, which is one of the prominent products for our portfolio, it has been developed in France. So that we deal with Sage International for support there. So that's our introduction. That's Care on Business Solutions. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn it over to Dimo. Mathilde and Theophile for their presentation. Thanks, that was a great introduction. Thanks a lot for, for inviting us today. It's a real pleasure being with you. So today we're going to present this session with uh, Theophile. So my name is Mathilde. So thank you very much for receiving us. I am in charge of the Latin American market and I will be opening our new office in Mexico. The objective will be to, to manage this market and we have a strong focus on mining and that we want to develop on this new area for us. Perfect. And yeah, as Paul mentioned, I'm based in our office in Toronto in Canada. So today we're going to uh, speak quickly about Demo Software and Dymo Maint, which is a branch of Demo Software. We're going to present in to detail our CMMS range. So CMMS is a computerized maintenance management system. We're going to see in to detail the integration with Sage 300 and Sage X3. And we're going to have a quick demonstration of Dimoment MX, which is our cloud solution. Okay, so the demo software group, so who are we? And we have eight fields of expertise. We are editor and integrator of software solution. So the solution you can see in, in a range, uh, those are the software we are developing ourselves and the other uh, only distributing. So right now we are only going to focus on the CMMS part. 
which is the most international. And uh, on this part, we are only working with our own sort of terms of uh, some key figures about the group. So we have a turnover right now of uh, 52 million dollars, 450 uh, employees currently, and we have uh, 10 locations. So there are four in France, uh, one in Toronto, where is Mathilde, one in Kuala Lumpur for the Asian mar market, uh, one in Limerick. Uh, so in Ireland and uh, soon one in Mexico and uh, another one in, in Germany, so in Munich. The interesting thing here is that uh, all those locations abroad, they are uh, only for the maintenance part of uh, our group. Yeah, perfect. So now let's speak about what Dymo made, which is, as uh, Theo mentioned, a branch of Dymo software that is really focused 100% on the maintenance software. So, but some key figures. So we are working in the maintenance world since 25 years. So we have a lot of uh, experience and a lot of expertise on that. We have more than 4,000 customers all around the world. Our uh, CMMS are available in different languages and we are really able to really work with really small and medium-sized structures businesses or we are also able to 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 work like with a group since we can manage the multi-location and multi-time zone for example and yeah we propose some uh, solution for every uh, industry so i would say that uh, most of our customers are in the manufacturing area but we are also working with some in facilities and environments healthcare and transport transportations. Okay, so among those uh, 4,000 customers, if we look at all the sectors, some references, for example, in America, so North and uh, South America and Latin America, so for example, IDM, 10 plants in Mexico, Giant also, which is in the car business industry, so in Mexico, SNF in Brazil, Aurora, cannabis industry in, uh, in Canada, Air Liquid, for example, in the gas, also Total, for example, uh, on the distribution in all uh, Africa and Asia. Also mining focus, uh, right now, more than anything in Africa, for example, the, the UMS, so Uniting Mining Supply, those are the, the leaders in, in Guinea in the so logistics for, for the mining sector in Guinea. The example could be Laurentian Diamonds. They have plants in Belgium, Vietnam, Mauritius, Cambodia, and Botswana, so plants and mines, so for, for the diamonds. Other example, the Cominac, this is a mine uh, in, uh, in Niger, uh, uranium mine. This is uh, some, uh, some example, some references uh, we, we are working with right now uh, in the mining Second. Thank you. So now let's focus a bit on what is expected of the maintenance department. So you will see that it's quite a lot. So we expect them to communicate effectively, to resolve the issues the first time around, to intervene at the right time, to anticipate all the problems, to uh, guarantee security, traceability and uh, regulatory control, to solve the problem as quickly as possible, also to have a control over the cost and expenses, and to be like a professional and organized. So that's a lot. That's why having a CMMS can really help. Uh, let's have a look on the func functional scope of the maintenance. So the idea will be to really have a tree structure of all the equipment that you would like to maintain, all the equipment, all the assets. You will put all the information about the technician, the engineer, the spare part, the supplier. We can uh, manage directly the contract in the software. Everything will be linked to a work order. So a work order can be generated in different ways. It can be generated directly from a technician, for example, or it can be generated from a work request. So it could be like anyone that is on site that could generate it, or of course, through a preventive maintenance. We have a schedule, so we have the technician schedule and the asset schedule that we're going to see into detail. And everything about the inventories, the restocking alert, the purchase order and the budget. So we will see, also, of course, like some uh, dashboard analysis to see what's cost the most, for example, like if it's more the corrective maintenance or more the preventive maintenance. And on the connector with Sage, we're going to uh, connect on two aspects for the stock and for the purchasing. But we're going to see into more detail a bit uh, later during the presentation. We were saying that it can be really useful to implement a CMMS 
to improve the cost control, improve the maintenance times, the maintenance scheduling as well, improve the feedback since you can have a full traceability and history on what's happening in the maintenance department. Also a reduction in equipment cost and improvement of the spare part management and to increase the reliability and the availability. Okay, so eight pitfalls to, to, avoid, to avoid when uh, when you will choose your, your CMMS. So the first one uh, would be to choose a CMMS that is not scalable. So this would be first, which means that you will have a high dead cost. So it would not be cost effective and uh, it would not adapt to, uh, to the need or to the necessity. Uh, also, so this link to the second point, so opting for a solution that is too complex or ill-suited to your organization. So both, so those uh, those two notions are they are very linked. If you have uh, non-scalable software that uh, that is not evolutive, you you will not be able to have uh, one suited for your own uh, organization. Another one would be to acquire a solution that doesn't have or provide mobile access or mobile access for the field, uh, where you can uh, directly do the work order, do the works. And also remote access. So we saw, especially during the COVID, that uh, they, there is a need of uh, having a view, an access to your software without uh, being especially on site. Fourth one would be choosing a CMMS that is not connected to the information system. And this we will see a bit more in depth after with the, the Sage connector. But the idea is to, to have it communicate uh, with all your information system. The fifth one, so not obtaining user buy-in. So this would mean that uh, your, your, the software is not user-friendly. And um, the problem is that uh, maybe your team will uh, will or choose it but also could uh, enter uh, data that is uh, not uh, not true false data and uh, so the the, so the software would be uh, useless uh, another one so not making use of preventive and scheduling functionalities so this uh, we will uh, we will also uh, look at it further in the presentation the seven point so not following up on spare parts and subcontractors the idea is also uh, get it linked but also managing not only your own maintenance but uh, going a bit uh, a bit further in uh, in your maintenance and uh, the last ones have a software that uh, is able to provide analysis provide analysis you have uh, to have a recording of the data and this is linked also so if you want to have good data you need user buy -in. okay so now if we look at some specific constraints for the maintenance that uh, we can solve with a CMMS solution. So some example would be first the, the mobile equipment. So you have equipment that is moving, moving uh, in the mine, moving uh, maybe from one side to another. Uh, so the idea is uh, first you will be able to locate it. For example, when you create a work request, so you can uh, you can add a special field for the location, and so you know where is the equipment and uh, where the maintenance needs uh, needs to happen. Another one is that on uh, if uh, so on the equipment you can add a specific uh, area where it's uh, operating. For example, another constraint is the remote location and network difficulties. Here the idea is that the mobile apps that we are going to present a bit a bit further is able to work uh, without uh, connection. So you can have, for example, the office that is uh, connected to the internet and uh, you can synchronize at the beginning of the of your shift of the day and just go and do the works. Also, the full cloud, uh, the software that is full cloud will be able to access with any kind of browser. Uh, another one so would be the rotation of staff. Here, with, uh, with the planning within the software, you will be able to manage, for example, different teams, different shifts, and uh, manage the planning. For example, uh, teams are working two weeks, another one two weeks, and have different workflows also. Consider that uh, people are sick or not, they are available, and all of that. And the last one could be, uh, for example, a dusty environment. So um, with uh, adapted mobile device, you will be using gloves, for example. You will be able to still do the works and uh, think uh, after that uh, your work. Perfect. So now we're going to show you a bit what's the best solution to manage your maintenance. So we're going to present two products. The first one is Dimoment MX, which is the new generation product uh, 
100% cloud-based uh, MMS. So here we can see that we can use it in multi-platform. So as mentioned, we can use the web module, but we can also use the tablet or the mobile app. The good thing of the mobile app is that it can work offline, meaning that you can do the synchronization as soon as you have an internet connection. It's a scalable solution, meaning that uh, we have different options. So the express standard or full one that you can really adjust to meet your uh, need. It's a multi-language, uh, multi-time zone, multi-currency uh, software. And it's really user-friendly, easy to use, really ergonomic. And as we mentioned, this one is a 100% cloud solution, meaning that the implementation will be really fast and secure. And the other product that we also have... OM, so OM is the, our on-prem solution. So if you want or there is a internal rules, you can still implement an on-prem solution. So basically it's the same functional scope than the full cloud, but it's a very really strong software. It also works multi-currency, multi-company. It, uh, it also works with the mobile app. Basically it's the same functional scope, but on-prem so you have to install it on every computer where you need it to work so if we look after that on the the moment app so this is uh, i think this is uh, one of the most interesting features uh, for for the mining industry uh, for the maintenance so basically this this uh, mobile application it will uh, synchronize uh, with the and the software can be or on-prem or cloud. This app, it functions on offline mode. So it means uh, you can, uh, what I was saying before, you can synchronize at the beginning of the day and do all the works you need to do and synchronize uh, when you get back uh, to internet connectivity. It works Android, iOS, on tablets also. You can basically uh, just uh, download it from the stores and uh, log in it. Also for the requesters, same thing, they can all have access to so the mobile app on their phone and just uh, do some uh, work. Okay, so now let's have a look of the connector so how it works um, so basically we are really focused on the maintenance of the future so um, we are of course connected to sage but we can also be connected to some supervision uh, product or for the predictive maintenance or the augmented reality so we are really like um, focused on that so this is some of our partners based in uh, mainly in Europe. And now let's see into more detail how it works for the connector. So you really have to think of, um, I would say, master and slave relationship, where the master will be sage and um, die moment will be the, the, the slave. So the idea would be to put all the information into sage about the cost center, about the spare part, about the supplier. We can define a periodical update, okay, to update into, uh, into Dymo. In Dymo, we can directly make some purchase requests. So we can create a purchase request that will be sent as a duplication into Sage as a purchase request, and that will need to be converted into Sage into a purchase order. So we will do the reception into Sage, Okay, we will have an update of the stock and we will have an update of the stock directly into die moment. Every time we're gonna make a work order, we're gonna do a work order and we're gonna consume some spare part in the CMMS in die moment. We will have some uh, stock movement that will be like directly sent into Sage. And then we will have a update of the stock that we like be updated again into demo mate. Okay, so if we go further than the Sage connector, we can also connect to all your information system. So basically, uh, the one with the ERP is uh, pretty much the same that we just saw uh, ju just before with Mathilde. Uh, another example would be with the planification. Uh, so the planification, basically, it will help us. So when there is a maintenance work on a on a, on an asset, it will send it to the planification uh, production software, and uh, and uh, it will communicate with also the unplanned downtimes and uh, validated downtimes. Another one uh, would be the MES. So it will just uh, basically send a maintenance call to uh, our CMMS. Other example is the supervision, the SCADA. 
uh, we can connect it uh, to uh, to the CMMS. So uh, when uh, an equipment has a alarm, but also meter reading measurement, that will be uh, automatic. And uh, the the last example uh, could be uh, with the connected uh, objects of IoT, um, and have also some uh, put in place some predictive maintenance with uh, some breakdown forecast. Perfect. So I think now it's time to go on the on the product on the demonstration. Now that we had a global overview of uh, everything else. So for that, we're going to just create a work order with different profiles. Something I forgot to mention is that uh, we have named licensing, meaning that we have different type of uh, license. We have the requester that uh, can be used by uh, anyone in the company that can only make work requests. We have the supervisor that have access to everything, so to the work request, work order, uh, to the schedule and to the analysis. And we have the technician that is uh, that has an access to the work request, work order schedule, and that's it. So during the presentation, we first going to connect as a requester. Okay, we're going to create a work request. Then after that, we're going to connect as a supervisor. So we're going to review the work request and we're going to convert it into a work order. And from that, we're going to connect as a technician in the mobile app to complete and to do the job in the work uh, in the mobile app to do the job of the work order. So I'm just going to go directly on by moment MX, I'm going to connect as a requester. So you will see, oops, sorry, I wasn't in the right, uh, the right place. So I'm just going to connect here as a requester. You can also use uh, the requester on, of course, on the mobile app. So you can see here, we only have a few information. So we are here connected as Robert. We can see he's in the requester. And we all only have the form of the work request that is uh, here. And we have the work request information. So seeing the one that needs to be proceed, the one in progress, the one completed, and the one that are closed, and also um, access to the tree structure. So here, we're just going to uh, create a work request. So once again, that's something we could do on the mobile app as well. And we can just um, say that the work, the truck doesn't turn on, for example. We can directly look on the list of the different assets that we have. So I can directly uh, type here the truck. Okay. So we can see that here we are on the mining site and on the mining uh, vehicles and that we are on the truck here. So we can see here we have a notification saying that we already have some exi existing work requests on this asset and that's okay. So here we can put the uh, location, so site one, the priority is critical, the work type is a reparation request and we can make a comment saying that uh, the truck is not working and making some notes for the example. And from here, I'm just going to click on save and you will see the generated code. It's the 46 here that has just been generated. So now I'm just going to disconnect and I'm going to connect as a supervisor for you to see that all the profile, of course, are connected. And you will see on the supervisor profile that we have way more information. So you can customize like the widget that you want here on the home page. You can see here on the top right that I'm uh, connected as a supervisor, so as Scott Daniels that I use the USD, the time zone, and here to configure the mobile app. Um, before going on the uh, work request that we just made with another profile, I just wanted to show you some um, 
quick functionalities. So here on the top right, on the question mark, we have the online help, the new features and the uh, support. So you just have uh, uh, an ID and your password and you can create uh, tickets. And here on the online help, we have a dedicated support team that really creates some help with, for example, screenshot and for you to, to and we also have the new features here. So if we go on the top left, we can see here some notifications. So the one we just created here, the 46, uh, just appeared. We can also define to get an email, for example. We have here the work uh, orders alert and here the restocking alert. And on the left here, you have the main menu with the direct access to the assets, to the work, to the schedule, to the stock and purchasing, the resources, all the setting about the, the CMMS, about the configuration and all the reports. We also have here the tree structure. So as I mentioned, you can define the colors that you want, the favorite menus that you want, the widget that you want to see here. You can really like um, define that and here on the tree structure you can directly uh, look for your asset and it's going to open automatically the assets so on this asset we have different options we can directly create a work request work order or preventive work by using this button we can also use the right click but from now I'm just going to open it to see, like to show you what information we have on the asset form. So you can see it opened a new tab automatically. And from here, we're not going to review all the information, but just for you to know that we have a lot of information on this asset form. So here we have the header with the code, with the description, with the status of the asset, with the asset family the in-service date, if it's in service or not. You can see the criticality, you can see the comments. You can have some general information about the brand, about the supplier, about the uh, manufacturer, serial number, for example. You can also add some technical information if it's under warranty or not. The purchase date, the warranty expression date, the purchase cost. You can add a picture, you can associate some file. So if you have a technical documentation, for example, we can also see all the spare parts that are associated to this asset. And from here, we can directly go on the uh, spare part form. And we can see all the history, all the work order, work request and preventive job that have been done on this asset with a direct access of course to the different uh, work. We can also see the movement so if we move from uh, one side to another side uh, it can appear here in the movements. We can see the downtime, the meter, the task list if you want your technician to follow different tasks uh, on this asset that's something you can add here you can also add some uh, additional fields and see the cost considering the label, the part, the subcontractor, the downtime. Only per year and only that are specific to this asset. So now that we saw uh, this information, we can go on our work request, the one we just created before. So I'm just going to open this one, the one we created, and that we're going to review as a supervisor to create a work order. So just going to move this. So here we have some information on the work request. We can see the code, we can see the requester, we can see the comment that Robert uh, wrote. So we can reply to Robert and say, okay, Rob, we are on it. That way he knows that we are working on it. Uh, I can check the, the, uh, the general information, the asset, and of course, uh, the file that are already associated. And from here, I just have to click on this button, convert into a work order. 
Do you want to save? Yes. So I'm going to convert and I'm going to create the work order. You can see it opens a new tab automatically. And from here, we can just see the status. So it has to be done. We can put uh, some general information and we can add the resources. So here, we're going to add some um, technician. We're going to add Darrell. So we ask Darrell uh, to do the job to fix the truck. So we plan, we just consider that maybe it's going to need like two hours to uh, do the job. But we can also add some uh, spare parts on downtime or subcontractor. So here for the example, we're just going to add the spare parts. So I can directly check on the list. And to fix, it's going to need like the uh, this. Let's say that it will need like uh, eight and a battery. Like it doesn't matter, just for the example. Uh, so what do we have here? And let's, yeah, let's take the, the battery as well to have like two spare parts and uh, one technician that uh, are assigned to this work order. So we can add a task list. So here I'm just going to add um, the task list check motor, for example, that where the technician will have. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and we can see the plan cost. And once the job will be done, will be completed, we will be able to see the completed cost. So from here, I'm just going to go at the top and I'm just going to save and close or just save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, show you from the mobile app to do this work order uh, as a technician. So Theo, is it okay if I stop my screen for you to share yours? Yes. Perfect. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Perfect. We can see. Okay, perfect. So if I open, so as you see, uh, so the, the application, the mobile app, you just download it from the Play Store, very simple. Uh, as you saw, so um, Mathilde just, sign, just assigned to me uh, a work order. So I have it in the push notification. Uh, if I enter in the mobile app, so I have to log in as a technician first. Um, as I said previously, uh, so I can uh, synchronize uh, so full differential and all of that. Uh, if I take you for a tour uh, on this mobile app, um, so the idea is that it's very, very simple to use. So it has a good, uh, well, very good uh, adoption rate uh, on the field uh, by the technician especially, so they can enter uh, the right information. The idea is that everybody uh, use it. So what what can you do? So first, uh, you can have some information about the asset. So for everything, we can you can edit it directly uh, in the in the software. You can edit the QR code for the asset for the parts also. So for example, if you're working in the mine and uh, you find uh, your articulated trucks, you can or just scan with a QR code. You scan the QR code and you end up directly on the on the asset, and you can also just find your articulated truck. Here, uh, you will have some uh, a resume of uh, of information on this asset, so some uh, some specific information, last work, next work that is going to happen, some files directly uh, that are linked to the asset that you can download. And a small history of the last uh, uh, of the last operation on it. Um, 
you can also do the readings. So the readings is, uh, or for example, you are connected to uh, your IMS or SCADA, well, uh, SCADA on your mind and it just updates all the temperatures and all of that directly uh, in the software, but you can also just, uh, when you are passing by the cutting machine, for example, um, update uh, the value of uh, uh, that can be uh, counter, uh, temperature, and uh, whatever. You can also do uh, some stop taking on the shop. So basically, if uh, you had uh, some, uh, you, you made a purchase order, you can, uh, when you receive it, uh, just uh, do some uh, some stop taking. And uh, basically, same thing, you can scan the QR code uh, and just say you entering 15 of them. Okay. Um, next thing, so you can create a work request. So basically, it's, it's, it's uh, exactly the same information that uh, we saw on uh, on the profile uh, on the software uh, on the, that uh, showed us uh, Mathilde. Basically, it's the same information. You can add a picture that uh, we'll see uh, the supervisor and add also uh, recipients. You can, as a technician, see all the work uh, the work request. You can see those that are assigned to to you. You can see if you scan uh, if you scan uh, an equipment. You can see all the work requests existing on this uh, on this equipment. And uh, you can, uh, for sure, you can uh, convert it to work order yourself. Other thing, you don't need to uh, do work request that you need to convert into work order to do some work. If you are in the mine or you are on a specific work, you ended one and you need to do another, you can create a work order yourself uh, directly on the field and just enter uh, what you did, uh, take the parts, uh, add some other technician working with you, uh, some files, pictures, downtimes, and all of that. Finally, so you can look at all the the work order that are existing. You can uh, you can look at it uh, by uh, criticity. You can look at it uh, only those uh, that are assigned uh, to you. You can look. Uh, you can find uh, just a search for one. You can same thing scan the QR code of an equipment and directly see all the works that you have on the on the on this equipment. And for sure, you can just look at the work you have during the this day or during the week and, uh, and everything. Uh, if we do the work on the truck that uh, that we we were looking at, so basically, so we can see the comments. So that uh, just uh, just wrote Mathilde. You can make um, enter enter some data about, for example, the work type. So it was a well, no, it wasn't a control uh, well. We can put that, for example, it's a control and it's mechanics. You, we can see all the parts that uh, just uh, just assigned to us, Mathilde. So um, first, we can say, yeah, we we use eight of of those. We use one of those, uh, but we used maybe more uh, of those. We can also add some other parts. Same thing. I can just go. Um, to uh, to the stocks, uh, uh, search for parts, uh, scan the QR code, and say I'm uh, I'm gonna use uh, four three brakes, for example. I can add another technician working with me, but also, for example, if uh, it's the end of my shift uh, and I didn't end the the work, I can I can just uh, let it uh, in progress, and uh, the next uh, technician can just add himself onto the same work order. I can look at the, the tag list that uh, that I just uh, assigned to me, Mathilde. So the idea is that I can do uh, so all the tasks that, that are needed, and uh, I can just say okay. And uh, if I couldn't uh, do the ring inspection, I uh, I could say the not feasible and say why. So for sure, I can look at the files, files uh, related to the equipment, files related to the work request, files related to the work. I can also uh, take a picture when I ended uh, my job, and uh, so we, we have a trace. 
so those are the related files uh, to the to the equipment, and I can ask for a signature. For example, I just ended the, the work on the on the articulated truck, and uh, the driver maybe or whatever he can sign and saying yes, uh, he did the work. Some down times. Also, we can relate uh, as uh, as we saw on the asset form. We can relate some down times cost uh, for a specific equipment. Uh, diagnosis. So this is uh, very interesting because we can create uh, some effect, cause, and remedy for each uh, of our equipment. And so after that, we can have uh, a tree, uh, failure tree for all um, our equipment. That have some very interesting analysis. So for example, so the noise it was uh, because of a breakage, and the remedy, the remedy was replaced. And finally, we can make a report. So the report is or I can dictate uh, with uh, with Google, or I can just write and uh, and say uh, it's done. On the duration that uh, that it took me, uh, or I can manually put, for example, it took me uh, one hour. But also, when I uh, began the work, I could just have played uh, the little button uh, here, and it will just automatically um, discount the time. And finally, I can put it completed <clears throat> and just send it. And here, uh, very, very simply, I just uh, received and treated a work order. So the idea of the app, as I just said, very simple, very easy to use, work offline, and uh, this is why it's great, uh, especially for mining. Uh, okay, if uh, uh, we go out of, um, if we go out of the mobile app and we just go back just a bit on the software, so I just wanted to show you uh, rapidly so the different level of uh, analysis that we have. So the first level we have is directly within the software. We have some reports that are already made, uh, very simple to use. So for example, the work reports. Here uh, you can choose so some uh, indicators uh, focused on maintenance uh, and just uh, have uh, some uh, so play with the filters and uh, view some reports. And here you can just uh, find it. Uh, for example, if I put well, all of the indicators and uh, look at, uh, at uh, some, uh, some interesting date, I can just generate directly a report. This report, I can uh, download it as an Excel also, just like that. And I can also work on it. Second level of, uh, of uh, analyze uh, is with our module Power BI. So this uh, this module is uh, linked and uh, developed especially for the moment. It has already so a dashboard, also down times um, focused and linked with uh, with uh, the data your own database. You can look at an analysis, for example, on your different sites, uh, times, uh, etc. The last possibility uh, would be uh, to have an export of your database to your own uh, BI, so you can do your own analysis. A very quick overview um, of, uh, of, of the software and the mobile app. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mathilde and Theophile. So um, if we have any questions. So we have different steps. The first one would be to have a kickoff meeting to define like the objective, the project plan, to really like have the, the objective of the project. The second step would be to do the data collection. So we kind of give you a template and we give you an assistance in the, in the process of the data collection process. Uh, then we will do the import for you. So Daimo is in charge of the imports. Then the fourth step will be to do the configuration of the connector between Sage and uh, Daimo. 
And finally, the last step would be to uh, do the remote uh, training. So to do the supervisor and the user training. We have a uh, new functionalities that are added in the, in the software every, uh, uh, so we have eight version per year. So that, that's a lot. And every time we have a new release, of course, you like get an email with all the information and you also have a direct access to the to the new release information on the CMMS. Very much, Mathilde and Theophil, for the great presentation. If any of you have uh, follow-ups, uh, you can follow with uh, any any one of us at Caron Business Solutions. Thank you very much for your time and hope we see you in the next MUG meeting in October.